Today we will learn about the plasma kinetic model. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. If you add energy to a solid, for example if you try to heat up ice, you get a liquid, water. If you add energy to a liquid, so you heat up water, you get a gas, for example, you, you boil and get water vapor. Now if you add even more energy to a gas, you get this fourth state of matter called plasma. Plasma really is air molecules that are broken up with lots of energy into positive and negative components, often known as ions and electrons. This causes the plasma to behave in very distinct ways compared to solid liquids and gases. For example, plasmas react to electromagnetic fields, for example, lightning. So what we're going to learn about today is something called the kinetic model. This allows us to model plasmas, and what we're going to do is we're going to follow the trajectories of a large number of these charged particles. So since these particles are charged, they respond to external electromagnetic fields. This might include an electric field or a magnetic field. Additionally, these plasmas exert electromagnetic fields on each other. A charged particle exerts an electric field, and if that charged particle is moving, it creates a current which consequently generates a magnetic field. So this is actually a really expensive computation. For example, if you had n particles and I wanted to compute the force on one of these particles, I would need order n calculations to calculate the force on this particle because there are n other particles. But we, if we want to evolve the simulation, we need the forces on all the particles, so we have to repeat this process. So in addition finding, to finding the force on this positive charge, we also need to compute the force on this charge, and that charge, and that charge, and that charge as well. In, in all, the total work that's required is order n squared. And this is why this is known as the n body problem, which is computationally expensive. So what do the equation of motions look like? Well, for each particle, we solve the kinematic equation. So the rate of change of the location is the velocity. And the rate of change of the velocity is proportional to the acceleration, or m times a is equal to the force. Now in this case, because these particles are charged, the force is given by the what we call the Lorentz force, that is, it's proportional to the charge of particle qi, and it, it depends on the electric field that the particle feels, its velocity times the magnetic field exerted. So in this equation, xi and vi are the location and velocity of particle i, qi and mi are the charge and mass of particle i, and once again, this is called the Lorentz force. Notice that the, the E, the electric field, depends or is generated by all of the particles in your system. Similarly, the magnetic field B is generated by all the particles in a system. Now these equations are actually really hard to solve. So what we typically do is we make approximations. One simple approximation is what we call the cold plasma approximation. So when we say cold, it means that these plasmas have very little energy, or they have very little kinetic energy, which translates to low plasma velocities. Because of these low velocities, you can imagine that the current generated by the moving chargers are really small. So we have small uh, magnetic field. So if the velocity is small, that means that magnetic field is small, V cross B is small, so one approximation that people often take is what we call this electrostatic approximation. So the kinematic equation stays mostly the same, the rate of change to position is equal to the velocity, but now the, the force, the mass times the acceleration, is only proportional to the electric field. Something else that's hidden in this model is the fact that these particles are collisionless, that is they can pass through each other without transferring energy. Another approximation that we have implicitly made is that it's going to be impossible to simulate each and every ion and electron in the system. 
For example, we know that Avogadro's number is 6 times 10 to the 23rd. That is a lot of particles for an n-body simulation. So one way to, to simplify this is to approximate clusters of ions and electrons by giant, what we call macro particles or macro clusters of ions. So what we're going to tackle today is a 1D simulation where we imagine that all of the ions and electrons are on a line. The electric field generated by particle I is proportional to its charge, QI. The sign of the electric field at some other location xj due to particle i depends on the sign, Q, sign of qi but also whether the point xj is to the left or to the right of xi. For example, the electric field at some location xj if it's to the right of xi is equal to qi over 2. If it is at the xi location exactly, its contribution to the electric field is 0. Whereas if it's to the left of the location xi, the electric field contribution is minus qi over 2. So finally, we have the electrostatic kinematic model, which is for every particle i equals 1 to n, we solve the equations of motion. The rate of change to the position is vi, and then this force is proportional to qi times the electric field contribution from every other particle in the system. This kinematic model is commonly used in many plasma simulations.